Hi, it's Drew back again with Princess Craft RV and today we are going to be uh, walking through the appliances and operations of the 2021 Tab 400. We're going to start right up front here with the loading and unloading procedure. Uh, right up front of the tongue here you have a slide latch. Uh, as it sits now this is going to be the unlocked or starting position when it does come to load you up. Uh, from there we're going to center our ball and drop underneath the ball. Uh, we are then going to lower the jack on top of the ball once fully seated. We're going to slide that coupler lock for, or that slide lock forward, uh, making sure that both these two teeth on either side of that slide latch are fully engaged in the frame. Uh, not a bad idea to go back and add a secondary pin, although it is not included with your purchase. Uh, definitely recommended to keep that from potentially rattling loose uh, going down the road. Also, you're going to have your tow chains here. Uh, these need to be crossed underneath the coupler and hooked onto the uh, receiver of the vehicle. So state law in Texas states that these do need to be crossed underneath the coupler and it is against the law for those to make contact with the pavement at any time. So skate that fine line of making your turns left to right with enough clearance, but not so much that these may make contact with the pavement. Uh, also, you are going to have your seven-way receptacle here. This is going to plug into the bumper port uh, this is going to give you full function to your, your tow vehicle's braking system, lights, um, charging system. All of those things are going to run through this seven-way cord. Uh, also, further here back on the frame, kind of tangled up here, is going to be your emergency breakaway. So if I go ahead and untangle that, uh, this is a very important safety feature. So this is essentially your last line of defense. Uh, if these other tow components were to fail, uh, as the two vehicles separated, this is going to act like a rip cord to the electric brake system, uh, essentially applying full 12 volts to those brakes, uh, avoiding a run runaway camper scenario. Uh, it's very important that this utilizes a third connection point on the receiver. You do want this separate from the tow chains. Uh, in the event, again, that those tow chains become compromised, you still have a clean connection of the emergency breakaway. Heading right up here to your propane compartment, uh, this is going to house your 20 pound propane cylinder. Uh, this is going to be the most common propane cylinder, same variant you're going to find on any gas grill. We have an open and closed valve on the top, a tension band that holds that tank in place. And when it becomes time to go ahead and take your tank out for service or refilling, you're gonna make sure you turn the valve off and disconnect your pigtail here. So easy screw on pigtail as well. Uh, when Returning it back, just make sure that you screw that on nice and tight. Keep this tension band nice and tight as well. First up is going to be your stabilizer jacks. Now we have stabilizer jacks on all four corners of the unit. These are for stabilization, they are not for leveling. Uh, once we are a level, we are then going to run these down. Uh, it's going to be best suited if you go ahead and use a light touch with these. Uh, they will last longer in the long run. You have a three quarter inch drive nut, corresponding crank handle with those. Uh, come down, make contact with the pavement, maybe just a quarter turn more to sure everything up. Uh, again, no need to really bear down on these in either the lowered or the retracted position. Uh, also here on the ground, you're gonna see a little AC cover. This is designed for when storing the unit. This is just gonna keep any insects or uh, bugs or anything from nesting within the uh, the, the air conditioner as well, um, and just held on the corners there with a few snaps. So very easy to engage and disengage. So what we have here is going to be your sewer outlet connection. Uh, you have two valves here, black for black water. Black water is going to be anything that comes from the toilet, uh, solid body waste, toilet paper, things like that. Gray water is going to be your sink, your shower water, the relatively cleaner of the two. Uh, in the center here, we have a standard bayonet fitting. Uh, when it does come to either remove the cap or connect your sewage hose, they work on the very same premise. You have four prongs here along the outside of the tube and keyholes on the cap or the, excuse me, on the sewage hose itself. You'll go ahead and put that in the halfway position. Give it a quarter turn to go ahead and lock it on. So it's very important that you operate these valves correctly. 
Uh, manufacturer is going to uh, recommend that they do remain in the closed position during use. You're only going to dump as necessary. That becomes especially important with the black water tank because you have solid body waste, toilet paper, things like that. We want to keep that tank specifically in as wet, as wet in condition as we can. So uh, what that means is just keep the valve in the closed position. Only dump as necessary or as it fills up or if you are changing locations from that point on. Uh, to open either of these valves, it is just going to be a six inch pool towards you and treat these kind of like a vacuum lock. They should never be opened at the same time. Uh, the the kind of popular option is going to be dumping your black water first. Once you are uh, satisfied with that, you go ahead and close it and then you're going to pull your gray water and dump that. That's going to wash any shared plumbing and the sewage hose out as well. Uh, moving on here, a uh, good time to talk about lug nut torque and uh, tire inflation. Uh, these tires run a, a max 50 PSI. That's going to be right where you want to run these tires uh, and any trailer tires for that matter. You can find that number stamped on the sidewall of the tire as well as on the data tag of the uh, camper here. 50 PSI again is going to be the max tire pressure and that's exactly what we want to maintain. Now these lug nuts have also been torqued in a star pattern here in our shop to 100 foot-pounds. Manufacturer is going to recommend a retorque procedure the first 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel. It's very important that we check and make sure that those are maintaining that 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, manufacturer further recommends that at the start of each trip there on after, again, we do go ahead and check and make sure they are maintaining their torque. Uh, right beside that, we have your 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. Now this is only going to plug into the camper one way. You have two slotted receptacles in one L shape. You're just going to line everything up properly, plug straight in, give it an eighth inch turn to the right that locks it in. Then we do have a secondary collar here to screw down and lock it in further. It's going to be my recommendation for every unit that we deliver uh, to go ahead and add a surge protector in line here on the power supply. Uh, many different options available on the market, uh, but the most important thing is that we are protecting the unit from uh, environmental surges, substandard wiring, uh, used and abused power supplies, things like that. Uh, the only way to do that effectively is again adding a surge protector in line. So if you have any questions on what we recommend or how we recommend to use them, feel free to give our parts department a call. They'd be more than happy to go ahead and educate you on the proper use of a surge protector and what we recommend. Uh, dropping down below that, we have a solar plug here that's designed for a portable solar option. Of course, this unit has roof-mounted solar, but if for, some, for whatever reason you wanted to go ahead and supplement that with a secondary panel, uh, it is very easy to do so here on this uh, body connection. So next up is going to be your fridge panel here. Um, only big thing with this is, of course, keep the mud daubers and flying insects from nesting within the appliance. Uh, other than that, give it a visual inspection a couple times a year, make sure nothing's gotten in, uh, make sure everything visually looks in good shape, and you're going to be good to go. Uh, when it does come to removing or replacing the vent cover, it's super easy. You have uh, four tabs along the bottom side of the vent. Once we get those bottom seated and the top riding flush, we go ahead and give those a quarter turn. It's going to go ahead and lock it on. Now, I always go back and give it a kind of a little tug to make sure it is, in fact, locked on. You don't want to lose this going down the road. Uh, now, quite a bit going on in this compartment. Um, this is, of course, going to be, uh, you have your water connections, things like that. So quite a bit to talk about. Uh, starting up here with the light itself, of course, you have two options. You have one where that light is on all the time. And the second option turns that into a motion light, uh, where anytime you open up the compartment, of course, it's going to turn on. Middle on that switch is going to be off. Uh, beside that, we have your cable satellite inlets. So some hiring campgrounds will provide a park cable service, and just about every satellite provider is offering a satellite package geared towards RVers. Either way, this is going to be the inlet of those services, and they will feed directly to the designated TV area of the camper. So they feed in here through the bottom port of the floor, as well as your hose. And then, of course, you can take advantage of those services if they are available. Uh, next up is we have your city water connection here. Now, water pressure becomes very important when we do talk about your city water connection. Uh, as you can see by the sticker, this unit is rated for a max 50 PSI water pressure. So what we're going to do for you is we do include a water pressure regulator with your purchase. It's very important that we do use this every single time we take the unit out. 
this pressure regulator is going to hook directly onto the water source or spigot. Your hose is then going to screw onto the water pressure regulator. And lastly, you would make your uh, connection here by routing your hose up through the, the floor and rotating this trailer bound connection. Uh, of course, after you make your connection there, we're, it's very important that we do orientate these valves in the correct position and they do give you a key on how to do so. So if we were running this on city water, we would, uh, from this position, just turn this green one over and that is of course gonna be in city water connection mode. Uh, there's also other modes here since we are currently running the unit on uh, from the water tank and the water pump. We're going to go ahead and put that into uh, dry camping mode. And then you, of course, have the, the other uh, different options for what you're trying to do within this compartment. Um, other than that, we have your uh, quick connect outside shower sprayer, uh, however you want to think about it. Uh, and you have that here that corresponds with this blue hose. Utilizes, again, a quick connect fitting here. So if you uh, get this kind of in line, and slide that collar back until it seats fully. That's gonna make a nice firm connection and then you have access to hot and cold water on the valve, very straightforward. Uh, helpful to wash your feet uh, if you're going out, out to the beach or something like that. Uh, and then we also have your low point drains here. These are going to be the lowest point in the unit's plumbing. That's how we're going to drain everything in between water source and fixture. Manufacturer is going to recommend that anytime the unit is going to be in storage for more than seven days that we do go ahead and drain the, uh, the unit completely of water and we're going to do that right here on these valves. Uh, if we go ahead and drain this, these two valves along with the freshwater tank, the unit's going to be ready for storage uh, for essentially an infinite, infinite amount of time. Uh, also here we have your water pump switch. Uh, easy on off toggle switch. Now that is a redundant switch. We have that same switch there on the inside. So uh, if you forget to turn it on here or would rather turn it on on the inside, you can surely do so. And then down below here, we have a black tank flush. So uh, this corresponds with a jet inside the black water tank and it is specifically designed to help blast off compounded toilet waste, body waste, things like that. Uh, operation of this becomes very important. We wanna make sure that that black tank is, that black tank valve is in the open position uh, before we allow water to rush into that tank. There's no check valve. There's nothing to keep that water from overfilling that tank. So it is very important that we do operate that with the black water valve in the open position. Uh, just about covers it here in this compartment. Uh, a lot to go on there. If you do have any questions, feel free to comment below or give us a call. Uh, we'd be happy to kind of walk you through that further. Uh, now, moving on here, we have the Alda vent here. Uh, of course, not much you're going to be doing with the appliance here at this location. Just make sure you don't restrict the flow, keep that free breathing. Uh, it does blow very hot air when it is on, so uh, other than you know the carbon monoxide uh, scenarios and things like that, it will pretty much melt whatever you put in front of it. So, so just keep in mind, uh, keep that free breathing, uh, especially during operation. Here in your main storage compartment, uh, other than, than being a storage compartment, a couple things to take note of. Uh, we do have, uh, again, that same style light here within the compartment, uh, and we have a battery disconnect switch. Now, it's very important that we do utilize that battery disconnect switch for periods of long-term storage. What that's going to do is isolate the battery from the 12-volt system. That's going to keep any nominal or phantom draws off of that system and accomplishes the very same thing as physically disconnecting the uh, battery terminals. That's gonna be best for storage. A lot of people like to go ahead and use their solar to maintain uh, the battery during storage. It's gonna be my recommendation to just go ahead and disconnect that battery. That's gonna put you in a lot better shape long-term uh, than using that solar. Uh, very easy and clearly marked in the on-off position. If the battery's orientation looks correct, the picture on the front, uh, then you are connected, you're ready to go. If you go ahead and turn that, rotate that picture of the battery on its side, then it is disconnected and ready for storage. Uh, moving on here, we have a couple all-weather outlets. Excuse me, nothing too crazy, uh, just some all-weather 15 amp outlets uh, to power any devices you may be taking advantage of here on the uh, entry door side of the unit. Uh, door hold open, uh, keeps that entry door nice and secure in that open position. If you want to then take advantage of the screen, uh, you can do so. Uh, you also have a front step here, easy in and out. Of course, the light's going to correspond with that motion. Uh, if you go ahead and pull that out, that light turns on. So 
So very simple, kind of spring-loaded, a really nice design. Uh, last but not least here on the exterior of the unit, uh, we have the gravity feed for your spare tire. Now you can go ahead and use that crank handle or they do include a uh, kind of a closed end ratcheting wrench with the unit. Either way, uh, it's very easy. You follow the directions there on the, uh, uh, just about covers it here on the exterior of the TAP 400. We're gonna go hop on the inside and take a look at those appliances and features on the inside. All right, walking into the entry door of the TAP 400, first thing you may notice is going to be the uh, hideaway screen door, which is a super cool feature. They've had that around for a few years, uh, but it is a, a very cool uh, kind of selling point. Uh, also, uh, you have quite a bit of stuff going on, again, right here inside the entry door. Uh, first things first is going to be your courtesy panel, convenience center, uh, goes by many names. Uh, you are, of course, going to turn some functions on, some lights on, water pump on here on the display, but it is also going to give you a real-time readout of where your tanks sit and level of full as well as your battery. So if we go ahead and push that battery button, it's going to indicate full. Now that will indicate full anytime you are plugged into shore power. So to get a true readout of where that sits, it's very important that you do unplug and then of course test from this location. We have our freshwater tank, which is two thirds full, our black water tank, which is low, and our gray water tank, which is low as well. Uh, and then down below we have that water pump switch. Now again, that's a redundant switch, can be either turned on here or on the exterior of the unit. We have your porch light switch here. Uh, sink light, which is just going to be the lighting here in the kitchen, and then the accent lighting, which is just going to be the back lighting that you see above the cabinets front and into the side here. We also have your Alda system here. Uh, now, that, this, this Alda system is super cool. Uh, it can be very intuitive. Uh, you can set it up with time and temperatures uh, separately, but if you're not into all that, it is also super easy uh, super kind of user friendly in its kind of base capacity. So uh, you turn it on, it boots up, it's gonna take you here. This is gonna kind of be like your screen saver or your information screen. Uh, if we hit that one more time, it's gonna take us into the menu uh, side of things. And first up is going to be your uh, temperature within the unit. Now this, you just, all the system utilizes a radiant heat uh, so there's not going to be any like fan or blower motor to indicate that that is on or running. You will just, of course, set your temperature here and notice that the unit starts to get warmer. Uh, again, plus or minus to increase or decrease that temperature, very easy to do. Uh, below that, we have your uh, water heater function of the boiler system. Um, you have, of course, just kind of, so, so that would be off if we're our, all the way off of the scale. If we go ahead and hit that one more time, that's gonna be normal operation. So that's going to uh, just heat water as necessary. And then if we go ahead and, and kind of put that full throttle there uh, all the way up, uh, that's going to be boost mode. So what that's going to do is that's going to, if you're running the radiant heat as well as trying to heat some water, it's gonna momentarily power down that radiant heat and put all available power into heating as much water as it can as quickly as it can. And then the next two buttons below that are going to be your sources. Uh, of course, you have, excuse me, you have your uh, electricity option here, uh, one kilowatt hour, two kilowatt hours, essentially a low and high power consumption there. And then propane is just going to be on and off. Uh, we have, uh, again, you know, a settings button here uh, where you can really get deep down within those settings and start kind of fine tuning them and, um, you know, making it more uh, to your liking. Uh, and then if we go ahead and, and take a look back here at the main menu screen, uh, we can kind of see some of the, the functions of what we're doing. It's telling us that we are heating water at this point. Um, when I initially started the screen up, you saw a couple arrows going around in a circle. That meant that the radiant heat was on. Uh, if you have any failures to light, any, any, any kind of codes or anything, they're gonna be displayed on this screen as well. So it is, uh, again, very user-friendly. Uh, down below that, we have your Dometic Captive Touch Thermostat. Now, these are, these are not physical buttons. They're more uh, compared to like a touch screen. Um, if we go ahead and push the mode, that's going to give us um, our fan speed. Now, first up, we have to choose a fan speed to continue, and this is talking about air conditioner fan speed. Uh, so to keep that kind of going right with us, we're gonna put it on auto. If we go to either low or high, that fan's gonna continue to uh, run even if we've already uh, hit this temp, hit our set temperature. 
So once we confirm a fan speed, we hit OK. That's going to again take us into that air conditioner mode. Uh, noted by the snowflake here that reads cool. Our fan speed is auto and we have that thermostat set to 65 degrees. Now, if I hit that again, that takes us here into the furnace mode. Now there, this is, this is uh, referencing a gas burning uh, furnace, which this unit does not have. So this particular furnace uh, option on this thermostat is kind of null and void in this capacity. If I go ahead and hit it again though, that takes us into this heat pump option. So that would essentially be our uh, a, a secondary heating option uh, using the, the air conditioner, the Cool Cat air conditioner to go ahead and, and uh, reverse operation and actually uh, produce heat. So that is going to uh, function very well in a unit of this size, especially corresponding or especially working in conjunction with the uh, Alda system here. So you can feel free to run both uh, or as those uh, sources present themselves kind of go in between the two. So here we have the dinette area of the camper. Uh, of course, this is going to make a secondary sleeping area. Um, not easy to do by yourself. Will definitely be easier with a friend. We're gonna try and uh, make our way through it here. Uh, first things first is going to be uh, the most beneficial if you kind of start by moving things out of the way first. Um, especially with these bottom cushions, they can actually kind of uh, get in the way when you are trying to uh, lower that table down. All right, so with all the cushions out of the way, uh, we can see that we have two locking tabs here. Uh, now when we come to, of course, they're in the lock position now. So when we come to shift this kind of into that lowered position, we're going to make sure we push those down. And once we've done so, we're gonna kind of lift the table up to keep them from falling back into that lock position. We're then going to come here and fold the leg up as well. Now, once we've done so, we just go ahead and lift that off of that top rail. And if I move that out of the way there, you can see you have a, the same rail in the lowered position. So uh, we're going to again, tilt the table slightly up and then once we've go ahead and, and in this lowered position, we're good to go. Uh, we can then go ahead and uh, rearrange the cushions in that uh, form. All right, so on the way back up, um, it may or may not lock in this, uh, you know, kind of lowered position, although it's very well supported. So I don't, would not see a problem with it uh, not locking in that position. So you, again, you may have to repress those lock tabs down. Uh, but if they have not locked into place like they did here, we're just going to, it's just a matter of lifting the table back off of that rail and moving it to the top rail. Now, I would recommend that you do lock these uh, when it is in the extended position. Um, and you're going to either kind of pry them up with your finger from the top or just push them up from the bottom. They're kind of spring loaded. It takes very little amount of pressure uh, to actually engage those. So once we've done that, we just again, unlock this leg here into that extended position. And now that table is nice and secure on that rack and it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, now down below here, we have your carbon monoxide LP leak detector. It's a very important piece of safety equipment. It is very important that we test all of our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out. Uh, this, particular, uh, this particular appliance is wired into the 12 volt section of the camper. It does have a test button, functions very much like a smoke alarm. Uh, and again, we're gonna wanna make sure that we test that every single time we take the unit out. Uh, also here, a little bit of storage there on the underside. Uh, this side is just an access panel. Uh, so nothing that we're going to be storing in that compartment. And then down below here, we have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle to power any 12 volt appliance. Uh, we have a couple USBs to charge any USB driven appliances as well. And then we have a couple more USBs here on the 15 amp outlet. And then of course, uh, some standard uh, 15 amp receptacles. Uh, also here in this uh, dinette area, of course, we have the underside lighting here that's going to really uh, give you some light here in the space. Now that does have some different brightness levels, uh, kind of like a low and a high. Uh, we have your, um, your main window here 
Uh, of course, you have that screen option if you pull down from the top. And then you have that privacy option if you pull up from the bottom. Uh, now, when it does come to kind of opening and using these windows, we make sure that we push all of these red buttons and uh, make sure those latches are open all the way around. Then we are going to lift uh, to our designated opening and tighten these struts here on the side. And that's gonna keep that window open. From there, again, we can go ahead and pull the screen down from the top, uh, keep any insects out, things like that. Now, on the way in, you're going to also have a couple options on how you operate the window. Uh, so if we go ahead and loosen those struts, of course, if we were to pull the window all the way back and lock it down uh, here behind the plastic latch, that's gonna be fully closed. Of course, that's a travel position. That is the most secure position. Now, for whatever reason, if we wanted to vent the unit, um, we can go to that middle slot. And of course, we would do this with all of those latches. That's gonna give us a fingertips worth of opening there on the window. Uh, again, if we wanted to vent the window, uh, we certainly could do so. Uh, and again, closing is just going to be latching these all the way around. And that's gonna be the same operation for the front window here, the rear window there, as well as the window here in the kitchen. Now on the side windows, uh, the portal windows do not open, uh, but they do have a shade there that you can uh, pull up or down uh, if you'd like. Uh, also here we have your smoke alarm. Now this is a nine volt smoke alarm. Uh, same variant you're going to find in your house. Uh, runs on a nine volt battery. It'll let you know when it needs to be changed. Uh, not a bad idea to pick a extra battery up, keep it within the unit uh, in the event uh, you would need to change it. Um, moving on here into the kitchen area of the unit, uh, we have a, a nice fold down sink, of course, a nice glass top here, a Dometic sink. Other than that, uh, easy hot and cold here, uh, all the way back and out would be hot water, down and out would be cold water. Uh, very straightforward stuff. Um, stove here is also very similar operation. Um, you know, or very basic operation, I should say. Uh, you have a sparker or igniter here. So what you would do is you would turn this, of course, to light on the dial, and then go ahead and push that igniter in uh, until you see the flame at the burner. So very easy to use. Now, when it does, does come to shutting this lid, it's very important that you lift up to unlock that glass top and then shut the lid. Uh, again, same window that we just spoke of there in the dinette area, nothing too crazy. Your cabinetry is all going to have these locking buttons. Uh, if you go ahead and unlock that, you can lift it up. They're all going to um, hold open, things like that. So really nice cabinetry within the unit. Uh, very user-friendly, very easy to work with. Uh, same premise down below. You have these uh, same kind of locking mechanism there. All right, so here we are here in the restroom. Uh, first thing up is going to be the toilet. Uh, now what we have here is going to be a pedal flush toilet, will be a light press to fill the bowl with water, and then a full press to go ahead and flush. Uh, also, this is where you're going to be introducing your chemical treatment agents and things like that. Uh, whether that's gonna be a deodorizer or a tissue dissolver, they're going to be introduced into the system right at the toilet. So of course, follow the directions on the specific product you use. Uh, just about every single one of them has slightly different uh, instructions, so make sure you're following that. Uh, and just a reminder, we're going to make sure that we use single-ply RV-grade toilet paper. That's going to be best uh, for this system and dissolve the quickest, so very important there. Uh, other than that, here we have the pull-up shade uh, to give you some privacy when you are using the restroom. Uh, of course, we have hooks for your shower curtain up top here, uh, shower curtain within the bag. A uh, nice full wrap around that's going to, of course, keep water off the door, keep water off the woodwork here. Uh, above my head, we have your exhaust fan. Uh, now, this is marked open and close there on the lid, but it is, is slightly difficult to see. Uh, now, we have it in the open position. So if you can see those little plastic flaps kind of here on these side louvers, uh, then that means you're open. If we are to actually go and rotate that, you can see there's no more 
uh, plastic there. That would be the closed position. Uh, to turn it on, of course, is just a simple on off there uh, with the red button. Uh, now kind of changing positions here, uh, we can see that we have uh, the fold down sink here. Um, same kind of operation as the kitchen sink. So up and out is going to be hot water, down and out is going to be cold water. Uh, when you're done, you can just go ahead and fold that back up. We have your uh, shower here um, or shower sprayer, I should say. Uh, Multi-positional here on this bar, so you can go ahead and raise and lower that as needed. Uh, if we go ahead and remove that, of course you have hot and cold water here uh, on the valve. Very straightforward, very easy. Uh, lighting wise, uh, we have this switch here that's going to be for the backlighting, uh, of course here in the shelving. And then the light above my head, uh, we're going to find the switch directly on the uh, unit itself. So, uh, of course, up here on the ceiling, uh, we have a really cool light fixture. Uh, you push it one time, that blue center light comes on. We push it again, uh, we get that blue light with a, a little bit of side lighting there. And then, of course, the brightness level goes up, uh, up again, and then off. So, a really cool kind of light fixture. Uh, we also have your uh, rooftop vent fan here. Uh, what we do is we go ahead and crank this open. Now, this is... Uh, this runs in both directions so it will either exhaust air or bring it in from the outside uh, we choose our direction here and then we come over here and choose a fan speed uh, generally we find that most people will operate these in the uh, reverse position or exhausting air what they'll do is they'll open up all these windows they'll pull the screens get a nice cross breeze uh, and exhaust that air from the top so very user friendly very awesome uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it does need to, you need to make absolutely sure that you are closing this before going down the road. Uh, just go ahead and rotate that down, make sure it's nice and snug. Uh, here on the floor, we have your uh, fuse panel breaker box converter. Uh, now we have our uh, 12 volt replaceable blade style automotive fuses here on the right. Everything is marked in function. Uh, right beside that, it's going to be our recommendation that we go ahead and pick up a few extra fuses, keep them with the unit uh, in the event that they do go ahead and uh, need to be replaced out there on the road. Uh, and then to the left of that, we have your 110 volt appliances. Those are going to use uh, resettable breakers, just like you're going to find in your fuse panel box at home. And in terms of function, those are labeled as well. So very easy to uh, use. And then if I go ahead and turn my back here, we have your uh, Norcold refrigerator here. Now this is a three-way refrigerator. What that means is it's going to run uh, on 110 volt electricity. It's going to run on 12 volt as well as propane gas. So uh, if I go ahead and turn this on, we... Okay, so what we have here is going to be a Norcold refrigerator. Uh, oh. If I turn it on, just start there. I got the rest of it. So if I go ahead and turn it on here, that's going to display our current mode. Uh, in this case, that's going to be 110 volt AC voltage there. Uh, we have a mode button here, which is going to be that little square. And that we can see that circling through the modes. Uh, so after that 110 volt is going to be the 12 volt option here. Uh, now for that uh, 12 volt option to be in effect we then need to come up here and there is going to be a secondary switch uh, reason being is that these this this appliance in general on that 12 volt option is is very power hungry uh, some would say very inefficient as well uh, the reason why they have this kind of secondary switch is they don't want you to especially if you're boondocking go ahead and maybe uh, accidentally put it into that 12 volt mode uh, and then of course drain your battery and and leave you stranded so uh, something to think about there uh, if we go ahead and turn that off, we can go ahead here through the modes. We have next up is going to be the propane mode there, uh, noted, of course, by the droplet. Um, and then lastly, we have uh, the A with the plug. Uh, what that means is that uh, if, it, of course, in that auto mode is what's that no what that's noting, uh, is if the power supply becomes interrupted, if somebody goes ahead and unplugs us or if we're going to, to change locations, uh, that from there it will automatically start lighting, um, start l trying to light on gas. Uh, that's going to be by far the most popular option that we see most of our customers use is that kind of auto option. 
Uh, now from there, we have your temperature control. Of course, the more bars you see, the cooler the unit is. Uh, if we go ahead and open that up, of course, lock tab on the bottom, make sure you unlock it. If we go ahead and open that up, um, you know, in, in size terms, you're looking at, you know, kind of like a dorm style mini fridge. Uh, does have an ice box, which is nice, uh, but you know, uh, works very well for, for what it is. Um, other than that, I mean, we have storage here in this space. If we hop up here to the uh, stereo unit, now this is AM, FM radio, Bluetooth, uh, HDMI, uh, all that stuff. Now, if we go ahead and turn it on here, we have our modes that we can choose here up top, uh, volume control, uh, some presets we can set, uh, and then seek and find there. Uh, HDMI or yeah, HDMI inlet and a USB inlet as well. Uh, we can feed those services directly to the television uh, if we're inclined to do so. Uh, turn it around here. Excuse me. We have your uh, TV. Uh, it does have a locking tab here on the rear. So if I go ahead and touch that tab or push that down, that's going to swing that TV out. That TV is multi-positional. We can, of course, if we were enjoying the space there up at the front of the cabin, we could, of course, watch it up there. Uh, or if we're in bed, we can do the same thing. Um, now, when you go ahead and put it back in its stowed position, we want to make sure that that uh, is actually locking on that mechanism there. So you'll make sure that the wires are free and clear and you just kind of give it a, a slight push towards the wall and that's going to lock that in place. So uh, here in the bed, we get a couple reading lights. They come on blue. Uh, if we push them for one second longer, they turn to a bright white LED. Now also in this space here, we have a, another 110 volt outlet with dual USBs. And then we have your inverter switch as well. So if I go ahead and hold that button on, we see that green light. Uh, that's going to turn this outlet into an inverted outlet, which will allow you to go ahead and run any 110 volt appliance off of the battery. Uh, also, light switch here is just going to turn the backlighting that we see here uh, above and below the reading lights. So as we exit the unit, we're gonna talk about the entry door. Uh, you of course have those same uh, kind of pull down shade, uh, pull up shades that we've seen throughout the unit. You get a couple storage pockets. Uh, really convenient little trash can. Uh, and then also we have our last piece of safety equipment, which is going to be that fire extinguisher. Uh, also super important that we do go ahead and test this every single time we take the unit out. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push that green test tab down. Uh, if it springs back, that means we have life. If not, it's time to go ahead and pull that out and replace it. Uh, just about covers it here with the 2021 tab 400. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this explanation of the appliances and the operation of them. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to let us know, comment below, or give us a call. Uh, again, thank you for your time.